a little bit of a cliffhanger on last time where we said about, you know, the idea of proofs, program proofs. Where do we go from here then? Yes, so we can use uh, Akta, the programming language, also to do proofs, which, which means, I mean, we can do a number of things. Uh, we can prove mathematical theorems, very exciting for some, okay. But for the programmer, we can actually uh, certify our programs. We can prove that our program has certain properties. Right? So I wanted to do uh, quite a simple problem. So what I'm going to do is a, a problem about lists. So I'm going to define an operation on lists, which is called reverse. It turns the list around. Yeah? And what I want to prove is something maybe quite obvious, namely if I turn a list around and then turn it around again, I end up with the list I started. Right? Lots of properties of programs you want to prove are actually quite simple, they're intuitively clear, you could say. Um, but uh, to actually prove them and make sure that they really hold is actually still important because some of the properties you think intuitively are very clear about your program are, are alas, completely wrong because you made just some stupid mistake, or some stupid error or whatever and it doesn't work. Uh, but here, we really have to prove some very stupid properties, some very, from a mathematical point of view, very trivial theorems, but they matter for us when we want to run the program. Right? So here I, I have set things up already. I have an ACTA buffer. I've already put in my favorite list. One, two, three. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to do two things. I want to define a function a reverse or ref, which uh, gives me a list of A, produce a list of A, right? And so the idea is that this uh, function uh, uh, reverses a list. Okay, we are going to do this in a moment. But then, once I have done this function, I want to write another function. And this I call ref ref. And here is a type. So ref ref. As input get a list of A and as output it produces a proof that if I reverse this list twice, so I do ref A's and then ref again, I end up with the list I started. And here I use a dependent type, the equality type, and that was featured in, in our recent video uh, about Martin Hoffman's work. So that's the idea. So we first write a program and then we write another program, and the second program actually tells us something about the first program. So, how do we write ref? Okay, ref of some a's. Now, again, how do I write ref? I have to apply a magic trick. Oh, is this, this is Vingardium Leviosa. Exactly. <laughs> actually, <laughs> this is the recursion. Recursion, exactly. So, first of all, I split my input. It's either uh, the empty list or cons list. So if you reverse the empty list, you get the empty list. And here, how do we reverse a cons list? So if you think about, if you reverse a list 1, 2, 3, the, the reverse of 1, 2, 3 should be 3, 2, 1, right? So what we need to do is, if we recursively reverse the list 2, 3, we get the list 3, 2, and then we put the first element at the end. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So how do you reverse a cons list? You, you take the tail, you recursively reverse the tail, and then you put your, your beginning and the end. Yeah? Okay. You put your head to your tail. Uh, no. Sort okay. of. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This means we need to have a way to put something at the end of a list. So the cons puts things always in the beginning. Now we have to put it at the end. And here I have a name for this operation, which is called SNOCK. Why is this operation called SNOCK? Oh, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Uh, is it by chance reverse of cons? Very good. Well done. So we have this operation SNOCK, which is cons backwards, right? And okay, well, I'm going to write this in a minute. I mean, that is one way of how to do software development, right? I write my function and then discover I need some auxiliary function. I just say, okay, okay, 
I'll do this later. First of all, I do my function and then I go back and, and fill in the details, okay? So let's do it. So here, reverse, we do what I said. We reverse A's and then we snog A at the end. Okay, so ref is sort of finished, but not really, because now we have to fill in snog. How are we going to do snog? What is the magic word? Uh, recursion. Ah, very good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we do recursion, we first of all split the list. Okay, and if the list is just one element, the output is just the list. With, with one element, if I, yeah, if I snog an element at the end of the empty list, I get a list just containing A. And here, okay, let's say X, I'm not going to replace the X by A because my other parameter is called X, so let's keep it as X. Um, so what am I going to do? Uh, if I put A at the end, my list will begin with X again, right? But I have to snog uh, my A at the end of A's. Okay. So let's see, let's see if I if I if I if I do this snog. Let's first test snog. I say snog my favorite list, and then I put four at the end. I'm not very creative. Okay, and we get that this works. And now let's take let's test our ref. So ref of L1 is 3 to 1, works. And we can also try exactly what happens. Test if you reverse L1 and then reverse it again, we end up with a list from the beginning. But okay, now let's prove that that's always the case. So we prove this by writing another program. And this program is Interesting, it has a dependent type, right? We see here the arrow, the input is a list A, but we give it a name, namely A's, and the output is a proof. And this proof depends on the input, this A's from the input occurs here. Okay, before we start, we need to understand uh, what we can do with equality. So let me just copy some lines, some comments here. Uh, so here's a definition of equality uh, from the library. So I say two things are equal. The only way to do, prove this is called REFL. So REFL is a canonical proof of equality, like, like zero and success are canonical natural numbers. And using this idea, I can prove some useful properties of equality. So here is one I call trans for transitivity, which is a function giving, given a proof that A is equal to B and another proof that B equals to C, it produces a proof that A equals to C. Now it's not difficult to write this program. It's a one-liner because we only have to match the first input against REFL. And I, I explained this a little bit in the video uh, about Martin Hoffman. Here's another useful library function we need if we have a function from A to B and we know that the inputs are equal, the outputs are also equal. And it turns out, again, we can prove this by just pattern matching. Okay, so this is already done in the library. So now, how do we prove refref? How do we write this program? Magic word? Recursion. Very good. <laughs> Okay, so we pattern match on A's. And so there is the first case is that uh, ref of ref of nil is equal to nil. Now it turns out this is very easy because what is ref of ref of nil? A ref of nil is nil and ref of nil is nil. So it must be nil. There's nothing to be proved here. They are just identical. If you look here actually in ACTA, ACTA tells us that the goal is to prove that nil is equal to nil because it has already calculated that ref of ref of nil is nil. So all what you have to prove is nil is equal to nil and that's refl. Okay, 
very easy. This case is not so easy, so let me, let me explain this a little bit. What we want to prove, it's down here, let me just copy this. We want to prove that ref of ref of x cons a's is the same as x cons a's. Now, ACTA calculates this and it, it, it evaluates the program as much as it, it, as it can. So it, it, it says ref of x con something is the same as snog of ref. I mean, that is our definition of ref. But now it's a bit stuck uh, because it, it doesn't know what is ref of snog. But what is ref of snog? If I reverse a list where I put an element at the end, this element will move to the front, right? And the rest is reversed. So what is ref of snog of x? So this x moves to the front and the ref moves inside. So it's ref of ref of a's. And now why is this one equal to uh, x cons a's? Now yeah, uh, because ref of a's is equal to a's, this is just a recursive call to ref ref. Yeah? So ref ref always proves this and we can recursively call ref ref to prove this thing. Okay, so here we have to combine two equalities, this one, no actually this one and this one. And combining equalities we use this trans program because if you have two equalities we put them together saying trans. Okay, the first step is to move a, a snog over a ref into a cons, right? So really what we want we want, an, we want an, uh, an equality here, namely that ref of snog x is a is equal to a cons ref of x. Right? That's exactly the property we need. And this is just another program. It's, I call it ref snog. Okay. And now we have to, we have to quantify all these things. So we have a function which gets uh, as input a list and an element and then proves this. And here is the same situation that we had before when we wrote the program. This is an auxiliary program and these auxiliary programs they are called lemmas in... Uh, okay, I made a mistake. They are called lemmas in, in mathematics, so these are just auxiliary programs. Okay, so what do we do? We first call our ref snog. Ref snog, the first element is a's. So if you look at this proof, the first list here is the ref of a's. So we have to tell it ref of a's. And what's in the end is the x. Okay, let me just make a bit of space. And now the second thing is, is, is sort of easy. We just have to apply this ref, ref a's is equal to a's, but we have to use this under the cons. So here's a cons in front. And that's exactly where we need this other operation, namely it's called con. So we use the fact that cons preserves equality. So con. So we, we use this function which uses a lambda which says basically that if you cons the same element in front of a list then two equal lists will produce two equal outputs. And now let me put another shed in here. Oh, it's not an A. That's an X and there should be an axis. Okay. So I open the shed and I have this other shed left and this is actually exactly what I want to prove but for a shorter list and here really we have to do a recursive call. Okay, so this is uh, the proof uh, that ref ref that reversing twice is equal to its input but it uses this ref snog and okay I'm not going to complete this program or this proof actually 
Uh, it's a two-liner, it's not, it's not difficult and it only uses what I've already introduced, but I leave this as an exercise. But what we see here is that we can write programs which prove properties about other programs. And maybe you have noticed that there, is, that there are two magic words which turn out to be the same. The one magic word is from programming, recursion. And then there's another scary magic word from mathematics, which is called induction. And it turns out these two are the same, because here we don't really do a proof by induction, but it is nothing else but recursion. What we can do with this technology is a number of things. So one thing is in academia, when we, when we write uh, mathematical papers or theoretical papers, where there are theorems involved, we can check that these theorems are really true by proving them formally. And that's really quite widespread nowadays already. Um, but there are also industrial applications, and they are already starting to be used, where uh, some programs which are quite uh, security sensitive or quite, uh, financially important, uh, are uh, formally verified and they can be guaranteed that they have certain properties. That's lots of extra work and we are working on the technology to make it easier to do these proofs. You know, we want to make them more automatic, need lots of help, maybe use some machine learning to learn how to do them. But in the end, we want to have a program by whatever means it's produced, which gives us a certificate that another program does its job. Canonical numbers for the numerals. And here, when we define a construction on equality proofs, it's enough to do this for the canonical one, which is reflexivity. Which means, I only have to... You could view RGB as, in some sense, 3D. So, the first plane is R, G and B, or vice versa.